Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week we're going to take a look at the DHCP service that's built into Maverick's server. Now DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Profile. And DHCP is what your network uses to assign IP addresses to the various devices that want to connect to your network and have access to things like uh, Bonjour or uh, internet sharing and those kinds of things. And so uh, DHCP is something that uh, you use all the time when you have a network. Now for most of you, if you're a home user, your DHCP service is handled through your router. So whether that's an airport extreme base station or whether you've got another brand, uh, of router, uh, typically your routers are what handle the uh, the addresses and the DHCP service. Uh, now there are some advantages and disadvantages to having it handled by your router or by your server. Uh, for home users, uh, typically the router is better uh, since your router is always on. Um, there's uh, not as many updates and things that would have to restart it. Uh, it's really never off. Uh, in case you end up turning your server off, if you did that, then your DHCP service would stop and your other users who are trying to connect to your wireless would all of a sudden lose their addressing and then not have uh, a connection to your uh, internet anymore. So typically for home users, you probably want to use the Airport Extreme for it. Now, in office situations, a lot of times uh, offices want to have their own DHCP server that does all the addressing by itself. Uh, because they've got uh, a different uh, setup there, and so a lot of times in offices and things like that, they'll have an actual separate server that will handle DHCP. Now, it's up to you. Uh, the DHCP service in server is uh, is a really good service. You can use it at home or, or uh, in the office. Uh, that's up to you. You really could do it. Uh, it's a nice interface uh, to look at and uh, can make uh, DHCP you know, easier when you're doing network addressing and things like that because if you're in the server app already, uh, you've got the service right in front of you as opposed to uh, pulling up the airport extreme base station and pulling up the airport utility to make those changes happen. Now, one of the issues that you've got though, if you're going to use the DHCP service built into Maverick's server, uh, you got to make sure that DHCP on the router is turned off so there's no conflict. Otherwise, you'll have two DHCP servers trying to assign addresses and you're going to have uh, all kinds of problems and conflict. Now, if you're using an Airport Extreme base station, uh, that's going to cause you a, a problem, however. And uh, let me just show you why. So I'm going to pull up the airport utility here. And if you pull up the airport utility and you go into the network tab, you'll notice that in my router mode, I've got three modes. I've got DHCP and NAT, which is basically my port forwarding, uh, DHCP only, and then off in bridge mode. Right, So the bridge mode just basically means that uh, everything's kind of just going through the space station. It's not handling uh, any of the, uh, the DNS stuff, any of the DHCP stuff. It's just, it's just passive. Uh, DHCP only means it's going to handle the addressing uh, for your clients in your network. It's going to give out IP addresses, but it's not going to allow port forwarding. And then you have DHCP and NAT, which is port forwarding and assigning IP addresses. Now, you know that we need um, NAT or we need the port forwarding uh, in order for our services to be accessible outside our network. And so if you want your services accessible outside your network, well, then your only option on an airport utility or airport extreme base station is to use this first option. Because if you don't, you're going to end up turning off your port settings there, and then you're not going to be able to access those services remotely. So with that being the case, there's usually a lot of frustration about how do we set this up to make it work. So let me just show you uh, how you can do that. It, it's a little bit of a workaround to make it work. Uh, at some point, you know, maybe hopefully Apple would put a, a port forwarding service into server, but at this point they haven't. So here's, here's sort of what the workaround would look like. Uh, what you want to do is go into network options. And on this screen, what we want to do is we want to have the airport utility only assign two addresses. Uh, now, it'd be easier if it had signed one, but it won't assign one. So you want two addresses. So you'd come in here and you'd say, let's say, because uh, we know the router is one. So you might come in here and assign it uh, like this. Give it a two, two, three. So that way, that what that tells me is the DHCP range of my router is only these two addresses. That's all it's going to do. Uh, it's only going to assign those two. And so you also want to... So you also want to make sure that uh, you have enable NAT port forwarding uh, port mapping protocol on there as well, and then you would click save. Now I'm not going to do that because I'm not using it, so let me just click cancel. You also want to make sure that this is not set up either. Don't check this enable default host. Okay. Now once I had done that, right here it would say a range of two to three. That's all it would say here. 
Then what you want to do is come in and set up a reservation for your server for the two or the three, whichever one you want to do. And you would do that best by clicking the plus sign here. You type in your server's name and then MAC address. You go find the MAC address and put that in here. And for those of you that don't know where that is, let me just show you. It would be uh, in the uh, System Preferences, Network. You go into Advanced, and it's on the Hardware tab. And you'd find it on there. Okay, and that's where you'd find it. So let's cancel that and go back out here. You put that in there, and then you would assign it to the address of you know 10.0.1.2 uh, in our example here. That way, that's been assigned. Then what you do is come in and do another um, assignment. Click the plus again here. And what I do is just make up a bogus MAC address and just put placeholder or something for the description and put that for number three, or you could put it for two, whichever one you want to do. And that way it's, uh, it's reserved. Your router isn't going to assign it to anything, but now your router really doesn't, isn't doing any DHCP outside those two addresses. So what will happen is your machines then, when they go to look for DHCP, would go to the router, oop, no addressing, they, then they go right to your server and then get their addresses from there. So that's how that would work. So let me just cancel that. Okay, so that's how you would set that up in your router uh, to be able to make those things uh, make those things work. So let me do this. Let's just pop this down. Now once that's done, uh, you can come into System Preferences and just check to make sure that everything's reading right, that your IP address here is the one that you did assign in the airport utility. Uh, it should work fine, should work automatically, but you might want to come in and just check it to make sure. And you want to make sure also, of course, that it's in your DNS settings as well. Uh, the difference here, if you see this 1.27.0.0.1, uh, that just means look to yourself for DNS. That's the uh, that's the code for home. Uh, so basically, it's just saying look to itself. You really don't need that in there. You can remove that and just keep this address here that you've assigned to the server. But I just want to let you know in case you're wondering what that was. Uh, so anyway, so once this is good, then we know that uh, everything's set with our DHCP. So we can get rid of this. So let's just put that down. Okay, so now we can take a look at the DHCP service now that we've got that all set up and ready to go. So let's just click the plus. Actually, let's just do this. Let's edit this. I'm just going to double click this for a minute. And so what you see here is you can name your network, whatever you want to name it. Now, right now, it's just defaulted to 10.0.1 Ethernet because that's where it's getting its network connection. So server just made that name up. But you can name it whatever you want. You know, you can name it, you know, Todd's network or, or Joe's network or whatever you want to put there. You can, you can put a name in there. Then you've got the least duration, which you can say, you know, is an hour, a day, seven days, 30 days. And this is basically how long do you want a machine to have a DHCP address, right? Because most of your machines, unless you assign them a, um, a permanent address, are just renting that IP address while they're on your network. And so once they go off your network, that IP address goes back in the pool and becomes available to anybody. And then when you uh, come back into the network with your machine, then you borrow another um, IP address. So you're just determining how long you want a machine to have that same IP address before the lease is up and it's going to assign a different one. So you can set that there. Again, your network interface could be Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Uh, you could set up by uh, either one or both if you want to. You could set up two different networks, one for Ethernet, one for Wi-Fi. Uh, then you have your starting IP address, whatever it is here. And so you would put that in. And this starting IP address would be one beyond what you set up in the airport utility. So for instance, in our example, we use 10.0.1.2 and 0.3. So what you would do is you would start here with 0.4. And then take it up, you know, as high as you want to. Like in this case, it went up to 253. I'm not, I'm not going to have that many machines on my network. Uh, but, you know, okay, I've got all those addresses available if I need them. So that's what you would put in here. And then you have your subnet mask, whatever that is. And then your router's, uh, IP, uh, your router's local IP address would go in here as well. So you just put that in there. Now, down here, we've got your DNS servers. And let's just edit that for a minute. What you're going to do is put... Uh, what you want to show up uh, for the clients when they connect to your network. So for instance, uh, if we go back to uh, the network utility here, uh, what we're going to do is basically when our clients are on our network, right, whenever it shows over here, uh, we're going to determine what addresses go in this line. That's what the DNS server is. So this will be the DNS server in here, and then this is your search domains here. So if I just uh, slide this over, you'll see that whatever I put in here should show up over here. And again, you can see it's already there, uh, except for this. This is just uh, added by my server to look to itself. 
And then I can put any uh, search domains in here. So in this case, you can see my search domain there. I can add that in here if I want to force my users when they log onto my network to use that particular search domain. Uh, you can make it Google, you can make it whatever you want, uh, but you can add those search domains in there. So what that's going to do, again, when they're on our network, you know, when it shows on the Wi-Fi, it's going to assign these DNS servers here and these search clients here. So I just wanted to show you what that does. Uh, so let me put this down. So that's where you would set that information up. So we're gonna click cancel. And then when you're done, you'd say okay, and that would actually set up uh, your network. Let's cancel. And so then your network would be set up here. It would show you your uh, IP address range, and that information would be there. And it would go live once we threw the uh, switch live to set it up. You can always uh, get rid of networks by clicking uh, the uh, minus here. You can always add networks by doing this. Again, if you want to add one for Ethernet and maybe and one for Wi-Fi. Uh, you could also uh, just edit by clicking the pencil and it takes you back in here to edit it. Okay, that's how that works. Now, we also have one more option in the DHCP service. If you come over here to Clients, uh, you can actually assign um, DHCP reservations to your clients if you want right here inside the server application. So similar to what we did in the uh, airport utility, if I just pull that up again, where I made reservations right here for my various machines, uh, you can do the same thing inside the DHCP service here inside server. So let's just add one. If you click the plus, uh, you can put a name for it. So, you know, if it's a MacBook or whatever you want to put, I'm just going to put test for our purposes. You can see it shows up there. Uh, I can choose the network. Again, I only have one network available, so that's what it is. Uh, I could set an IP address on here. I'll just leave it at 253. And then a MAC address that I could put in here, whatever the MAC address is of the machine that you're assigning it to. So I'm just going to, um, you know, we can just add a bogus one in here. So let me just do that for a minute. Okay, so there we go. So I just uh, made up a MAC address here. We're going to say create. And so now it's created this, uh, this IP address, right? This reservation here. You can see it's a static reservation uh, for this IP address. So every time my client test uh, comes into my network, it's automatically going to get this IP address. It's reserved for that particular machine. So no other machine will get that IP address except for test and it tells me the network it's on. And so, again, this is convenient because if you have the devices that you know, you can actually set up these reservations, label the clients, and then you know who's on the network, you know who's got what IP addresses, you know which ones are available. Uh, it's just a great way to have those reservations so that you have all of your different devices accounted for. Uh, you can always come in here and highlight it and edit the client, client whenever you want to. Uh, if you have a client that you've added on there where you didn't add a static IP address, uh, or who's showing on your network, you can then create a static IP address just by clicking this, and it'll take you basically into the screen we were in uh, for the edit client, uh, just like this, where you can set that up. Let me just cancel that. So again, once all of that's done and you're ready to go, you can throw the switch, and you've got your DHCP service running. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.